Hey, the Mission Control. Uh, I continue my marathon day here, trying to get you guys some videos, get you caught up with where we're at. Uh, I want to talk about the challenges series. We, we kind of left off there a while ago. I want to pick up on that, and I want to talk about the challenges we've had with insulating this building. It's probably worth saying first, uh, probably want to go back and look at all the trade studies we did uh, and trying to figure out the right material to use, the right process to use to insulate this building. Man, we looked at spray foam, looked at different types of insulation, fabrics, different thicknesses, different R values, hardboard, soft. Uh, man, we looked at a lot of stuff. And what we ended up choosing to go with was uh, actually insulation really made for tent buildings like this. Uh, found a supplier and uh, procured everything that you see. It took me a while to put up. That was a long series of videos. And um, some of the challenges I have with it are just the building is very dynamic. It, it is a tent, right? So it does have some movement. Now it's not moving like feet or anything like that, but you know, or a meter. Uh, it, it's a uh, third of a meter, I guess, as close to a foot. It's, it's roughly, you know, a few inches here and there that move and wobble and get some vibration in it. And because of that, you can actually see up above me here, there's some sections where the tape on the insulation has actually come loose. And in some cases, the actual insulation has ripped where we had it secured in place with our strip of metal and a screw. And uh, the first major challenge is I, I should have put more attachment points on it. And uh, I think I'm gonna end up having to do that this year is get up there on the ladder and probably screw a few more uh, metal plates in throughout uh, just to make sure uh, that it does stay in place. But that's the first challenge that we've had is just attachment to the building with the dynamic building moving you know it it makes it kind of hard to keep everything perfectly in place i'm standing uh in the shade my goodness it gets warm in here uh standing next to our one of our two industrial dehumidifiers and we put these both in here because we're getting lots of condensation on the outside of the building and condensation of course is just just physics it's very hard to stop it uh a cold surface, warm moist air, the warm moist air hits that cold surface, the uh, warm moist air condenses onto the surface through a phase change, and there's really not much you can do to stop that. But what we have done is reduce the humidity in here. Uh, we're sitting about 50% humidity in the building uh, right now. Now we don't, there's a balancing act. You don't want to take it down too far because then the plants won't do well. So we're sitting right about 50% humidity We've really minimized the amount of condensation, especially like in the clear section here. That used to have condensate all, all over it. Um, and now we've taken care of that. So uh, behind the insulation, there's still condensation occurring. And that's El Bato. Uh, but there's just not really much I can do about it. Um, I could cut holes into the roof and try to let some of that air go out. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure even if I did that, I would still have condensation. So we're going to really have to keep an eye on everything uh, behind um, on the backside of the insulation just to make sure that no mold or fungus or anything really starts to form back there. Uh, that, that, that is the biggest problem with this insulation. It's doing its job. It's keeping everything warm in here. Uh, throughout winter, I mean, it's doing a really, really nice job. It's, it's 85 degrees Fahrenheit in here right now. Uh, what is that, like over 20 degrees Celsius, somewhere in there, uh, I think. And, I mean, at night, it's doing its job, too. The heater doesn't have to run very long to heat this place up. So, happy with its performance, just really worried about that condensation back there. So, that's, that's the number one challenge with the insulation that we have. Now I'm on the... Uh, west side of the building here and you can see these straps two straps here and the uh, insulation kind of pops here a little bit and the reason for this kind of our third and final problem is that when we get really big windstorms up here that's actually one of the main reasons why we have a building like this is a lot stronger than a traditional greenhouse um, we got like 75 80 mile per hour winds that came and they hit this building and when that happens you get pretty big movement on it you can hear it creaking and groaning uh, and when that happens when that happens, the air sneaks around the little cracks that are in the building because it's not airtight. And it essentially turns this thing into a giant sail. And so I put these straps in to stop it from moving away because we actually had one of them rip apart 
from the wall. It uh, ripped through the screws that we had in there and uh, it came tumbling down, so I had to put that back up. So the kind of the, when we're designing HAB2, we really need to be considerate of all these different factors. Um, I think insulation and the heating and cooling of the building will probably be the number one design issue that we have uh, that will drive everything else in the building as far as how we set it up, how much plants and everything we can have in there. It's, it's expensive. You can actually see it moving there. Uh, it's expensive. It's very important. There's issues that can arise if you do it wrong, like some of the things I made mistakes on here. So we definitely have to keep that all in consideration when we're designing HAB2. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop here. That's pretty much it for the insulation challenges. Uh, there's just a few of them, uh, but they're pretty big. So we're going to have to keep an eye on everything and make sure nothing bad comes of it. But thanks for following along. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget that you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian.